Hello, my name is Reverend Jonathan Campbell. I am the co-chair of the Association of Ministers with Disabilities of the United Methodist Church. We're continuing with our Bible study, looking at the Bible through the lens of disability theology. I hope uh, this reflection will be a blessing for you. Today we're going to talk about Exodus chapter 3 and chapter 4. Most of us are familiar with this text because it's the setting of the burning bush. Um, so let's talk about kind of the backstory of this. Moses killed a Egyptian trying to protect a Jewish slave from abuse. He flees Egypt hoping to avoid persecution. He's essentially trying to hide. He creates his own life, creates a family. And one day while he's watching the flocks of his father-in-law, he sees a bush aflame. He goes to investigate, and of course, the text tells us he meets God there. This text is important in terms of talking about disability theology because it reveals, again, a pillar of disability theology, which is the idea, I'm going to call it, the power of limitations. What does that mean, of course? Well, the story, of course, is this idea that when Moses arrives at the bush and encounters God, God asks him to go back to Egypt and to help God free God's people. And Moses responds like most of us would respond, who am I? And he gives a lot of different reasons why he po couldn't possibly do this. One of which, though, a significant one that he really focuses on is he has a disability. The text tells us that he is slow of speech. We don't know exactly what that means. It could mean he had a cognitive disability in which he had trouble processing information and, and getting it from his brain uh, out through his mouth. It could have meant that he actually had a physical disability involving his mouth. And so maybe he had a lisp or he had a stutter. We don't know. The, po the point is, he looks at his disability as a way, as something that will keep him from doing what God wants him to do. Unfortunately, people with disabilities today deal with that. They deal with that internally. Uh, they feel like they can't do something because of their disability because they have heard that over and over again through our society. Our society often assumes and um, just makes pronouncements that people with disabilities couldn't possibly do things of value. It's an assumption too often people in our society make. And so Moses makes the same assumption. I can't do this. I'm disabled. But then the text through how God responds, reminds us of this idea, this pillar of disability theology, that there is power in our limitations. Let's unpack that. Moses says, I can't do this. I can't speak. I can't do this. One of God's responses is, I'm going to bless you with Aaron, your brother. Your brother can speak really well. He'll be your voice for you. God also tells Moses, I'm, don't worry, I'm going to go with you. This reminds us the power of limitation to open us up to the need for other people. Moses needs God. Moses needs Aaron. Later on in Exodus, Moses will need his sister Miriam to help him. Later on in Exodus still, he'll develop a council of 70 wise people called the Sanhedrin to help him make decisions and guide the community. Limitations open us up to the reality that we need each other, and we are blessed by that. We are blessed by community. So that's one aspect of the power of limitations. It, it gives us the great gift of needing other people, needing God. Of course, that's not the only power of limitation that's mentioned in this text. 
throughout Exodus and in this text, but throughout Exodus, Moses has to be creative because of his limitations. He has to lead differently because of his disability. He has to think differently because of his disability. He has to act differently because of his disability. And because of that, because of that creativity that his limitations require of him, because he has to develop other skills, he is blessed by his limitation because his limitation opens him up to different possibilities and different abilities he wouldn't have developed or even knew he had without his disability. When I was in college, there was a song that has always stuck with me. It's by Joan Osborne. It's called Spider Web. She essentially has a dream of Ray Charles. If you don't know who Ray Charles is, Ray Charles is known as the father of soul. Um, if you've never listened to his music, please listen to his music. He's amazing. But Ray Charles was blind. And she dreams of Ray Charles this night. And when she dreams of him, he can see. And she asks him to sing, because of course she would ask Ray Charles to sing. And he tells her he can't. Since he's gotten his eyesight back, he says his voice has deserted him. She ends the song with, please don't let me dream of Brother Ray. She says, don't get me wrong, I'm glad he sees. I just like him best the other way. The idea that's permeating that song is also the idea that permeates the scripture text. The idea that our limitations open us up to things. That the power of our limitations require us to think differently, act differently, be creative, to develop abilities we didn't even know we had because of the reality of our limitations. Finally, this text speaks about the power of limitation by speaking about God, and then, of course, speaking about who we are in relationship to God. At one point, Moses says, look, how are these Jewish leaders ever going to believe me? And God says, tell them my name. Most translations that we're used to in English translate it, I am who I am. But a lot of biblical scholarship especially recently, has argued a better translation is I will be who I will be. For most of uh, Christian history, theologians have argued that this idea, I am who I am, God's name, or I will be who I will be, is simply there to remind us who God is, that God is timeless, that God doesn't change. Well, theologians using disability theology to read scripture have argued that we miss the point of this text when we think about it just in that reality. That really the text is saying something bigger than simply about God's nature. It's saying what everyone is like. It's saying what essence and, and the reality of who anybody is. The idea that they argue, is that the text reminds us that our essence, who we really are, is bigger than our limitations or our abilities. It's a both-and situation. Yes, I'm disabled, but I'm also more than just disabled. And that idea of who God is also reminds us that our essence is timeless. So someday I may not be able to walk. I can walk now, but someday I might not be able to. But that doesn't change who I am. I'm still Jonathan. It doesn't change my worth or my value, or that God loves me or has something amazing for me to do. And the same thing is true for you that your limitations and your abilities don't change who you are. Don't change your worth. Someday you may have issues you don't have now. It doesn't matter. You're still you. You still matter. So may you be blessed and freed from the fear of your limitations. May you stop believing they have to be hidden or 
that they weigh you down. May you be free to realize that limitations open up your need for other people, open you up to the beauty of community. May you be reminded that your limitations open you up to creativity and possibilities and abilities that you never knew you had. And may you realize your limitations and your abilities are not all that you are because you are who you will be. Blessings. And I hope you'll join us again. I look forward to hearing your thoughts and comments.